Hey guys, it's Liz. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a mom of four and we've been homeschooling now for six years. So I have a fifth grader, fourth grader, second grader, and a preschooler. In today's video, I wanted to give you an update on how Math Mammoth level four has been going with my fifth grader. So um, we have just switched to Math Mammoth this year from Singapore Math Primary 2022. Um, I've got a lot of videos if you want to check out my math playlist on how Singapore math was going for us. Um, my younger kids use math with confidence, but uh, my oldest is um, now doing Math Mammoth and thriving. And so a little background on that story is that we used Singapore math um, first, second, third, and fourth grade for him. And last year it just became really apparent. I needed to, to switch it. It was not going well. The math was getting harder. He was more resistant to me explaining things and Singapore math is not made to be independent. It's, um, I feel like it really needs that teacher model and um, it was just becoming really difficult for me to figure out how to use the teacher's guide, explain it their way, him not understanding, pushback, then what did I do? I was just feeling really frustrated. So Math Mammoth has been a game changer in our homeschool. I feel like our relationship is better. His math skills are strengthening. He loves that he can teach himself um, primarily, at least for now. Granted, level four is a, a lot of stuff that he saw last year in Singapore level four. So um, they're both advanced programs and I feel like there has been a lot of crossover, although Math Mammoth is explaining it in a much just more easy to understand way, I feel like for him. And um, so he's able to kind of track um, each lesson that you know, explains it to him, gives him examples, and then he can do these practice problems. And occasionally we've had a few times where he's wanted to, um, he's asked for help and that's been fine. We have used Maria, the creator has videos on each topic. And so we've used those a few times, but not a ton. I think we'll probably tap into that more as the math gets harder, maybe level five and up. For him, the best part is that he is able to teach himself um, like I mentioned, Maria has done a great job of just giving examples for each thing. She's usually got several examples. The child is able to read through and follow that. Um, and then um, there are a lot of practice problems. And so I don't know whether to say that's a pro or a con for us. Um, I think it's, you know, good bang for your buck. You're going to get a lot of practice problems in there, but it's also super overwhelming to open a page and feel like, Whoa, that's a lot of problems. Maria recommends doing about half the problems for the average student. And if you need more practice problems, you can do more. If an area is harder for you, you can revisit it. But the way that you can really kind of turn this into a spiral program, because it is not a spiral program, you're not getting reviewed daily on old concepts. But if you want that, then you can go turn back to previous chapters, previous units, and you can go fill in some of those skipped problems. So what, what I do for my son is I take a highlighter, before he does his math and I just circle approximately half of the problems for him. Um, if it's something that we've seen before and I know it's just way too easy for him, I will do maybe a quarter of the problems. If it's something that I want him to do more of, oftentimes um, the story problems, I will circle more of them. But um, that's just the way that it's laid out and so know that going into it, you're not really supposed to do all the problems, but the page can look quite overwhelming. Um, another thing I do appreciate about Math Mammoth is that there's graph paper included in there. And so, um, especially in this level, I feel like that's really important because not only are they learning how to do um, the mental math for problems, they're also supposed to show their work um, using vertical algorithms. And um, so it's nice that the graph paper is just in there. I don't have to print out anything or buy a separate notebook. It's just all there. I also really, really like that the instructions are written to the child. And so it's, it's followable. It's not like Singapore Math's um, teacher's guide was like, gonna drive me nuts. I just, I could barely figure out what it wanted me to say and do. And this one is just so crystal clear. I feel like it, it's easy to understand. And if my son can't understand it, then I can go back through and read how it explained to him to do it. And oftentimes I can say it in my own words that make more sense to him, but, um, it just is really, really clear. I love that it's written to the child in the book. Um, Another thing to note is that lessons vary in length. I feel like this is kind of a downside for me is that there's not a clear like day one, here's your three pages or day two, here's your two pages or whatever. It's, it's not like that. Um, generally I have my son set a timer somewhere 
between 30 and 45 minutes. And, um, you know, I'd like to work that math muscle to be closer to 45 minutes for us a day, but um, if it's something new or just a harder concept, um, it might be a little bit less than that. But it's not really clear how many problems to do a day. Um, you could take, you know, the year's worth of math and you could divide it by the number of days you want to do and try to figure that out. Um, you could do what we do, which is, you know, we're going to do kind of a max of 45 minutes and we're going to do our best work and um, see how far we get. And I think so far that's been working really, really well. I feel like we're going to finish for sure a whole level this year doing that even though we did start at a little bit of an easier level. But it's not super clear where to start and where to end. So just know that, that at the end of each chapter, you're gonna have a mixed review that is built in there. And then you'll also have a review of just that chapter. And so the review of just that chapter is covering only the concepts that you've just learned, but the mixed review is gonna add some things in from earlier chapters. Um, and I really like that because um, it almost takes the place to me of like having to do tests. And if he's getting problems wrong, we go back and correct those. And then um, sometimes we'll go back and do more of those skipped practice problems. But I haven't necessarily discovered when to do um, these end of chapter tests because I like what's already included in these, which are those end of chapter reviews. So. Um, if you have experience with that, I'd love to hear more about that in the comments. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but we just haven't honestly used this um, this year yet. So, um, And then this is the other book that comes with it. This is good to know. It's all of the answers for book A and book B of um, grade four. And I haven't always been great at grading the day of, so that's something I need to work on. Overall, I feel like this switch for our family has been so healthy, and um, it's kind of brought a... Um, a good spin on math for my son who is really math minded. He's really smart. I just feel like he was starting to think that he wasn't good at math. He was starting to get really down on himself and um, every single day last year was like a fight over math or just like a slump in the day when he started feeling like I just can't figure this out mom. And so uh, Math Mammoth has really changed that for him. This is a perfect curriculum for um, somebody who needs their kids to be a little more independent with math. This is perfect for someone who doesn't want any fluff in their math. They're, you're not going to find pretty pictures. You're not going to find, you know, creative little games that are worked into the day to day. It's really just problems, explanations, and practice. And um, and so if that works for you, which it really does for my oldest son, then it's going to be great. If you want to have more creativity, then um, you might not like this. If you want more games, you might not like this. Um, I did want to mention though that. Um, each of the chapters, they have done a good job at giving you these um, links to games. We have not done any of this. And so I don't know if that's because we need to take a day off of math to do some of these links to like, you know, different games that you could play to practice that concept. But I think that nobody really wants to do any of that stuff after the math lesson. So just know that that's there as a resource. If you need extra practice or just a more creative way to do it than just the practice problems, but that's there. One thing I'm trying to figure out is with my now fourth grade daughter, who has done so far really well with math with confidence. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to switch her to math mammoth and um, it's a tough decision for me because there's a lot of things that go into the decision. It's like, I don't like the idea of switching math curriculums. I know that is a, uh, it's a big flip for the kid of like what they're used to. Um, the way that they teach things is a little different. The order of what they teach things in is a little bit different. It's sometimes hard to figure out where those gaps are when you switch over. And so um, I just don't know if that would be the best thing for her. I also love her math curriculum. Math with Confidence is so fun. It has a lot of games and hands-on activities and really just creative ways to practice the concepts that they're doing. And it doesn't have the overwhelming amount of problems like Math Mammoth has. Um, it's just you do every single one on that page for my daughter and that's, that's that. The reason why I'm considering switching my daughter to Math Mammoth who's fourth grade this year, I'd probably start her honestly at four, just like my son, if we were to switch so that she has some crossover, so that she has some 
um, things that she's already seen as she's learning this new style of kind of self-teaching. Um, I'd probably do that. She'd whiz through a lot of it, I think, um, and then slow up once probably we hit the fifth grade level. But um, she's just not been liking those games and Math with Confidence is known for their games. They're so good at it and they have these super creative ways to practice mental math and to practice the concepts and um, they have all of these you know, fun little board games built in and new new ways to make math fun and card games and spin to win and things like that. She just has been wanting me to like write the problems out for her so she can get it done with. And all year that's kind of been her style. And I'm like, you know, that sounds like math mammoth. There's not a lot of fun, not a lot of fluff, not a lot of color. And you do your math, you teach it to yourself, do your math and finish. And I think she might be at the point where she's just growing up a little bit and that sounds better to her. Um, whereas like the earlier years when kids, you know, really like those games and they look forward to the extra, you know, practice with the fun stuff. I feel like she's kind of past that now. I'm kind of curious to see if my second grader ever reaches that point, you know, around fourth grade, like my daughter, where she, where he might not want to play those games too because he's loving them right now and my daughter loved him when she was in second grade but I don't know we'll just figure this we'll figure this out as we go I'm not really sure what we'll do with my fourth grader for her fifth grade year if we'll switch her like I did my oldest but it's worked out super well for our family and I'm really thankful that we gave it a shot because I felt really bad about switching I felt kind of like a failure like we couldn't make Singapore work um and I don't know that that was just not true I feel like he just needed a different style of teaching. And if you have any questions on Math Mammoth, um, level four specifically is what we've covered. Um, feel free to ask me in the comments. I didn't get too specific about the actual math and what is in here. This isn't necessarily a flip through video, but um, if you'd like a flip through video, I can make one for you. I just wanted to give you an actual update on how it's been going, why we like it, what it's done differently for our family than Singapore math. Hopefully that just answers some of your questions if you're considering switching or if you're not sure, you know, which level to put an older child in. Um, it's been a smooth transition for us to go to an easier level and whiz through the easy stuff until we are going to get to the harder stuff. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.